This Sweeney, conference can I will now somebody? be recorded. There we go. Good thing you remembered that, Rhonda. <laughs> can I get somebody to accept the minutes of the previous meeting? Councillor Collin, Councillor Gardner. Any discussion on that? If not, I'll call for the motion. All in favor? Um, Opposed, if any? Approved, carry. Thank you. Okay, the adoption of the agenda tonight. Can I get someone to Councillor Cowan, Councillor Wright? Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the motion on that one to be a Pardon me. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Okay, we're down to finance. Uh, we'll do them both together. Is there anything there that any of you have a problem with? Councillor Penner. Okay, so I don't have a problem. I'm just uh, curious about a few items. The uh, first two being uh, items 23, uh, 2020-2319 and 23-22, which are the remittances to Fort La Bosse and to Public Schools Finance Branch. And I'm just curious, uh, I sort of thought we'd remit that all to Fort La Bosse, but I guess uh, what is half of it goes to PSFB and the other half to Fort Lavosse, or how do they break that down? Uh, no, actually, uh, the large portion of it does go to Fort Lavosse. Um, I believe this year it was a total of about 1.1 million. Yeah. And public schools finance was, I can just quickly look that number up for you. And what we do is we, we start uh, remitting that in November. And it's based on the percentage of our tax collections. So whatever percentage we've collected as of the end of November is what we pay, or sorry, at the end of October is what we pay for November 30th. At the end of November is what we pay for December 31st. And then when we make our payment uh, for the end of January, it's the entire, uh, whatever school tax is left behind. Whether we have actually collected it or not, is um what we have to pay okay thank you I... um, i'll just i'm just getting you those total numbers here maybe what is going on Okay, does that answer your question, Councillor Penner? It, it does uh largely i've got two more uh curiosity questions if you if i can do them now sure go ahead Okay, the uh, item number uh, 2360, which is at the airport. Just curious what that arrangement is. That's the airport hay. Yeah. The hay? Oh, that was, um, yes, for, um, we put the hay land out for tender, both uh, the 83 property and the um, airport land or the industrial park. And then it's, so we had a individual was awarded the contract, if you recall. And then the portion of hay that is actually put up at the airport, that money is turned over to the airport commission to go into their budget. Okay, thank you. And uh, just for uh, the, if you want, I was just gonna give you the education levies amount. Um, yeah. uh, public schools finance, we, uh, owed them 504, 504,233 dollars, and Fort La Bosse, their money for 20 was 1,415,593. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there, I guess we'll get a motion to pay these bills. Councilor Cowan, seconder? Councillor Penner, okay, any more discussion on these? Councillor Wright. I just had a question about um, 2323 and 2312. 
um, the cell phone allowances, should those not come out of the, the WEG budget? Well, we actually pay the bills for the WEG and then that's exact, it, and then we're reimbursed from WEG. Okay. Yeah, we do each then charge, because we also pay, make the payroll, do the payroll for them as well. So it's just easier and all of their, say if they were going to convention or anything like that, we pay it and then get reimbursed from WEG budget. Okay, hey, any other questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Opposed? Gary, thank you. Look at it, Corey. He's not going to vote. <laughs> Hi, Corey. He he wants. <laughs> okay, we'll move along to number four, and this is where I'm assuming we're going to be using Corey. So, Rhonda, I'll turn this one over to you, please. Okay, uh, you have before you road opening by law 2786, and this is actually to open the roads in the CNR, sorry, EH, <laughs> that one. Uh, and you know what? I'm just going to turn it over to Mr. Nixon. <laughs> I always get confused between CNR and roads. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, through this subdivision, uh, we did a plan of survey and a plan of road opening. So we have to do a road opening bylaw for this. Um, so this is the CHRL uh, subdivision by the White Alder on Anderson Street. Um, you want me to read the bylaw? Uh, we have it. That's okay. I think they've all. Yeah. yeah, we have the bylaw. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this would be first read of the um, bylaw and. It, you have the map in front of you there. Those are the roads and the one back lane we're opening with this. We went this way instead of doing a plan of subdivision is our surveyors thought it was a better idea due to some oil things is kind of what we got to explain to you. We're not sure why they did it. It would have been easier going the other way, but this is the way we're going. Yes, normally, and we did have our public hearing because we had understood, as we normally do subdivisions, that the roads would be opened as part of the actual subdivision, that we wouldn't have to do a separate road plan. But the surveyor, because of mines and minerals, yes, like Corey said, decided to do a separate road plan. So it's unfortunate, like, sorry, I feel it is unfortunate because now it's adding that extra step to the subdivision process. Mm -hmm. But we we're kind of in because we want to get this wrapped up as soon as possible. Uh, we don't want to go back to redoing the whole plan of subdivision because I believe that would it would delay it quite a bit more, right, Corey? Yeah, it'd be two to three weeks. Uh, well, they'll have to make the new plan and then two to three weeks to get it approved and then back to us for approval. And then there's a hydro easement involved, so then it'd be back. They'd have to start the hydro easement again, and that's another six weeks or better. Um, so this is just a better way to go at this point. Yeah. So if council so desires, they can uh, give first reading to this bylaw tonight and we will send it into community planning uh, for them to look at it and decide if they feel they need to circulate it still because this whole subdivision had been circulated once. So. Okay, so we'll uh, need a motion on this then. Tara, did you have a question? Oh. No, I'll just make the motion for first okay. read. Grant's going to second it. Okay, any more discussion? Everybody understands what we're doing. No more qu questions for Corey. Okay, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Oh. Bye, Corey. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Corey. He's gone. All right, number five, recommendations from planning and finance. Councillor Williams, I'll turn this over to you, please. Okay. Um, my first recommendation from planning and finance is for the 2021 Southwest Southwest Expo sponsorship. 
I would like to make the motion that the Town of Burden provide Southwest Expo 2021 with the $500 sponsorship and a $1,000 pitch prize for a Burden business. Can I get a seconder for that, please? Councillor Cowan. In a discussion, I believe uh, Councillor Williams, this was the same as we gave last year? Yeah, th this is the same we've done since this started, yes. Great, okay, thank you. Any questions, anyone? Councillor Penner. Do we know where this event is taking place? Virtual online event. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried, thank you. Carry on, dear. Um, my next motion is for the Manitoba Planning Conference. It'll be held virtually online for half days on January 19th, 21st, and January 19th, 21st, and 22nd. And I would like to make the motion that all members of council be authorized to attend the Manitoba Planning Conference for those days with expenses per policy being paid. Can I have a seconder for that motion, please? Councillor Gardner. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll vote, well, Councillor Penner. No, just okay. a quick question, uh, can I, uh, Rhonda. Do you know who's all registered? Like the I Pearl. know because you guys are supposed to get a hold of Pearl. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm already registered. I registered through Trans Canada West, but Pearl didn't mention if anybody else was. There's three of them going on this one and the other ones that are all crossing over. So I think it was just a matter of picking which ones you could do. Yeah, I think Brad's going to planning and to healthy, um, age friendly, I should say. Age friendly, yeah. Yeah. Travis, did you wish to be registered for the planning conference? Yes, I did. And uh, I think I. I let Pearl know about one of them. I just uh, forgot to check which one. I know that someone has because when she called to register someone else, she checked for me to make sure that I was already registered. So I know she's been talking to them. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll make sure, Travis. Then. Rhonda's writing down to make sure that you're registered, Travis. I would. Okay, and great. I think, I think Grant, you're doing right planning and age friendly. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll call for that question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Carry on, dear. Um, okay, my next is I would like to make the motion that the Town of Burden renew the lease agreement with Westman Communications Group for the telecommunications facility at, at the Headworks building on lots 11 to 14, block 118, plan 2088, for an additional five-year term and at an increase to $600 a year. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Mr. Cowan, any discussion? Councillor Penner. I just have a quick question. I know nothing about this. Is there anything that we need to know? Um, this is located uh, by the water tower building. So they do have some infrastructure on the ground as well as on the tower. Like some tower on the tower. <laughs> yeah. And this has been ongoing. Okay. I think the generator there and that type of stuff. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of it's an on yeah, it's an ongoing. It's been for quite a few years. Yeah. And it, it was five hundred on the previous lease and they, they offered the increase to six hundred. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Councillor Cowan and Councillor Carl. We got them two happy. Good. Okay, let's carry on. I lost track there, folks. Bear with me. <laughs> That's you all right. Probably I... wondered, you probably wondered what's he talking about now. <laughs> all right, let's carry on. Next Go ahead, one. Okay, I would like to make the motion that we renew our membership with the Manitoba Environmental Industries Association for 2021 in the amount of $630. Can I have a seconder for that one, please? Councillor Wright, any discussion? 
Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Carry on, dear. I'd like to make the motion that the town of Burton renew their membership with the Hudson Bay Route Association for 2021 in the amount of $100. Can I have a seconder for that one, please? Councillor Gardner? Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Carrie, thank you. Carry on, dear. Okay, I'd like to make the motion that any members of council be authorized to attend the Healthy Communities and Healthy Communities are age-friendly communities webinar, the morning of January 19th, 2021, with expenses paid for policy. And a seconder, please. Councillor Gardner. Any discussion, folks? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Carry on, dear. Okay. And I'd like to make the motion that any members of council be authorized to attend the Red River Basin Commission virtual annual conference on January 21st, 2021, with expenses being paid for policy. And can I get a seconder? Councillor Cowan. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Carry on, dear. That was my last one. I'm done. God, you did a good job. You did better than what I did. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's move along to number six, the Boost Committee 2021 membership. And Rhonda, I'll let you handle that one, please. Okay, thank you. Um, per their terms of reference, uh, the Boost Committee um, members are to be ratified by the Town Burden Council each year. And uh, this year we've actually had some changes right near the end of it. Uh, and um, unfortunately, Paula Brazel and Lance McLean both submitted uh, their resignation, uh, obviously, because Paula moved away and Lance was a time commitment. Uh, but they were able to recruit uh, Bia Norton. So there's the list. So uh, that's the way the resolution's worded um, that the town of Verdon appoint Bia Norton to the boost committee effective immediately and accept with regret the resignation of Paula Brazel and Lance McLean. And further that, the 2021 Burden Boost Committee members are as follows. Tiffany Cameron, Krista Mellon, Clayton Murray, Grant Gardner, Bia Norton, and Liza Park. Great. Thank you very much. So do we need a motion on that one, dear? Yes, please. I make okay. that motion. Councilor Williams, seconder, Councilor Wright. Any more discussion on that, please? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Thank you. Number seven, Manitoba Good Roads. And I'll let you handle that one too, please, dear. Um, just uh, wanted to bring the council's attention. The list of the 2020 Manitoba Good Roads Association beautification competition unfortunately i don't see any property from the town of burden name this year but um you know as, as being a member that's the one thing that they do do they come out and critique your community and of course if you recall we did enter a yard in the competition for the yard um but unfortunately no one we weren't successful this year but hopefully in another year and of course there's not going to be a I'll uh, banquet at this time. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, can I get a motion to? I guess no, they said no. No, we don't need a motion on this one. No, no. info. 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 Yeah. And then number eight, uh, the membership renewal. That's part of, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, we've done this year after year, I recall. Mm -hmm. And our membership is $200. So can I get somebody to make a motion that we accept that as presented? Councilor Gardner, seconder. Councilor Cowan, any discussion regarding 
Manitoba Good Roads Association membership. Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried, thank you. Okay. Number nine. Changes to our provincial offices, and I'll let you take that one too, please, dear. Um, yes, we became aware of some concerning information last week uh, that there have been changes to the rural service delivery model in our provincial agricultural centers across the province. Um, these changes came about without I don't believe any stakeholder engagement, uh, no discussion with local uh, councils at all, or like I said, the other stakeholders, including obviously including the farming sector, agricultural sector. And um, so what is going to happen here in Verdon is that uh, Verdon Office will continue to provide workspace only for Manitoba agricultural and resource development employees, but will no longer be open to the public. So we are one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine offices uh, throughout rural Manitoba who are losing public access, losing a service, a very vital service to our community, to our surrounding community, and also also just to our businesses in town, because if, if our local farming community aren't coming to this office to get help with their claims, with their insurance, they're going to other service centers. And then what happens? They're not shopping in our local groceries. They're not getting fuel in town, whatever it might be. So um, I would encourage council. I have spoke with a member of Wallace Woodworth Council who I know they were discussing it at their meeting today, but I haven't had a chance to talk with CAO Mitchell to see what the result was, but it sounded like they were going to be seriously considering some lobbying efforts, probably a, a letter, and perhaps we could join, join with them in doing some of the letter writing requests for meetings, that type of thing. Because this is just another service. This is another sign towards centralization again, which, uh, we fought several years ago and now it's going back that way it's losing you know potentially jobs out of our community home you know home sales so i'm concerned i hope and i'm sure you folks are as well so i think we should probably do a motion up that uh, we participate with the council of the arm wallace woodworth in drafting up a letter to the Minister of Agriculture for the province of Manitoba and to our member of the Legislative Assembly. Would somebody like to make that motion or something similar to that, please? Councillor Penner, Councillor Wright, seconder. Can we have some more discussion on this? Councillor Penner. I was just wondering, uh, should it be a joint letter or should we each do one? Maybe the the more, the better. Good possibility, yes. Yep. Maybe, so, maybe a discussion on kind of the points in it, but maybe separate letters from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Councillor yeah, right. Cowan, did you have something you wanted to say there? No? Okay. Yeah, that, uh, that's a good idea what Travis brought up, either a letter on our own, but the same viewpoints, but I think one should go to the Minister of Agriculture as well as to Greg Nesbitt. I'm sure Greg will pass it on, but uh, I think we should go that route. So if I can get somebody to make that motion. I do have something else, Marie. I think yes. part of what, I don't think that this wasn't going to happen anyway, but this is part of this pandemic thing, right? Is all the different government services are have realized that a lot of these things can happen by phone and happen by all this different. And I think it just puts steam behind the efforts maybe to close these places faster. And I think this is going to happen in all sorts of different provincial organizations. 
that they're going to see they don't have to have the offices open at things. So if we want to keep it that way, there could be a lot of these battles to fight. But it, online doesn't work for everybody. No, and that's it. Online doesn't work for everyone. Like there are people who have adjusted very well or have figured it out. Not everybody can do it online. And I think that they go, well, this works for a percentage and it goes and they're forgetting about the people it's not working for. And I think we're going to have to be prepared for more of these types of situations. I, th I think as elected officials, when they make these type of decisions, uh, and this might sound ludicrous, but I think they should have the input of the people that are involved in the decision that they're making. It doesn't hurt to make a phone call or send an email. Like, I mean, there's some big farmers around here that uh, produce a lot of grain. They pay a lot of taxes to the provincial government. And I see no reason why they shouldn't be contacted and just ask their opinion, if nothing else, but at least have the respect to do that. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a, a motion on the floor. We have a second here, I believe. Um, did you want to amend that wording slightly? Because we said participate with council in preparing joint letters. We wanted to say participate with Council of Wallace Woodworth in preparing and submitting letters. Um, yes, that'll, so that'll be fine. Saying a joint letter unless they want to do a joint letter or. Mm -hmm. we'll no, that'll be, that'll be fine. And then when you get a draft, I'll just uh, I'll have a look at it and uh, we'll go from there. But I think it'll be great if you want to do that, please, sir. Okay. Okay, so. We need a vote. So any more discussion regarding this? If not, I'll get a call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Okay, committee reports. I gotta grab my book. Hang on a second here. Okay, Carl, we'll let you start tonight. Since it's the first meeting of the year, you can be number one. Uh, I went to the uh, council meeting last week, and I have not really had any committee meetings. Okay, thank you, Carl. Travis. Okay, so uh, of course we had our very long, large agenda planning and finance meeting. Uh, <laughs> and we got through that okay. Uh, along with uh, Mayor Murray and, and Tina and Rhonda, we had a good discussion with Scott Andrew last week. Not really a committee, but I guess it was an activity. And uh, had a very uh, in-depth meeting uh, with the library last night. How did that go? Uh, I think pretty good. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was just uh, a lot of stuff to go after. New policies, Excellent. and we have a budget coming up on the 25th. <laughs> Okay, Councilor Cowan. I attended the planning and finance last week and had a Prairie West meeting, and that was it for me. Good. Councilor Gardner. Okay, I had the uh, planning and finance meeting uh, last week on the Fifth, and also I had a vet board telephone text meeting, I guess you want to call, uh, pass the motions and figure out year end stuff. There'll be a report coming in, into the vet board uh, on all that, so it can be reviewed. Okay. And I think that's all I had. Good. Thank you. Councilor Wright. I had a Prairie West and the um, uh, Planning and Finance. Excellent. Thank you. Rhonda. 
Um, well, I guess it looks like we're just starting from the new year, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody went back to the previous council meeting because nope. we had joint council meeting. Stuff. So I'm just going to start with the new year as well. P and F, uh, Mayor Wright, and Deputy Mayor Williams, and myself met with Manitoba Justice. Um, if you recall back when we had AMM, uh, they the minister, we had been offered to have meetings with ministers. And this meeting with Manitoba Justice was as a result of our request to meet with them. Um, it was actually with a staff person, it wasn't with the minister. And she just basically gave us a bit of an update on the court office, uh, advising that they still have approval from Treasury to fill the position, but obviously with they haven't been posting it. Uh, they are going to be looking at posting again in the near future. Uh, she is going to send uh, the posting to me uh, so that we can make sure that it gets out in the public and perhaps gets sent to some of the people who had applied for the municipal clerk position. Uh, also, I, for, I neglected to say that our MLA, Greg Nesbitt, was in on, on the meeting as well. And uh, she is committed to following up with us again in March just for an update. Uh, we had a meeting as Mr. Penner, Councillor Penner uh, mentioned with uh, Scott Andrew. Um, we had a meeting in house with staff and volunteers regarding the skating oval and hoping uh, that we don't get too much rain tomorrow so that it can open up near the end of the week or on the weekend. That's kind of what we're keeping our fingers crossed. Hasn't been great weather, been lovely weather, but not for the making. I mean, yeah. Uh, one of the out of our municipal relations call is that the fire protection grant still hasn't been approved or uh, they haven't announced who was awarded that. If you recall, uh, Chief Yoakum had made uh, three um, applications to that grant. Um, and also, there was a new order set up just prior to Christmas which did extend some of um, some things under our planning and municipal act, such as when a subdivision had to be completed by conditional uses, anything that had a deadline, it has been extended. It falls within that time frame. Uh, on January 8th, we did have a progress meeting regarding new well site. Uh, Mayor Marie attended that with me and uh, Utilities Manor Rutledge. Uh, and after that, uh, Ron and myself had a meeting with our engineers regarding the existing water well and what work may be needed to it. Um, Development Officer Nixon and myself met with our municipal lawyer, um, Greg Tramley, uh, to start our discussion around enforcement matters, the building bylaw, derelict building bylaw, those items that we brought up for discussion uh, at Planning and Finance. So that work has started. He's going to be, he's provided us with some templates to go through. Uh, so we will be working closely with him. Um, I did have a follow up meeting with Scott Andrew yesterday. And so we are starting to um, exchange, exchange some documents and uh, I will be filling in you guys more. Uh, we had a WIG executive meeting yesterday, just uh, the two coordinators, CAO Mitchell and myself, to finalize the budget so that we could bring that back to each of our respective. Uh, we have to take it back to the WIG board and then that will come to our respective councillors. Um, Ron and I had another meeting this morning with our engineer. I had a lengthy meeting and update from the manager of our co-op on some of their uh, projects. And uh, just in case anybody notices, there might be some activity if there hasn't already been by the creek uh, down by the Toboggan Hill in that area. Uh, there was an abandoned pipeline that made itself visible on the edge of the creek. And so um, I think that it's Kingston Midstream is going to be going in and uh, cutting and capping that. So I just thought in case you've seen any equipment, that's what that's about. And other than our regular everyday work that we always have. 
Good. Okay, thank you. Council Williams, you've probably covered most of those too. I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I didn't do anything that other people haven't already mentioned to me. And I was in on the justice meeting and the meeting with Scott and PNF last week. And that's about it. Great. Thank you, dear. And for myself, um, I've covered most of those meetings as well, except I did an interview with Empire Advance. They wanted to know how good all the councils did over 2020. <laughs> You don't, you don't know, want to know what I said. No, I'm just joking. They never asked that at all. They just asked how we made out in 2020 as a council and a town. And I explained that we all did very well, keeping a smile and moving forward. And uh, I was very proud of what everybody did in this town to, uh, to keep us all on brighter time. I know the morale gets a little dead sometimes, but... Uh, We'll get to it. Anyway, that's basically uh, what I had to do. So we'll carry on here. I don't think there's any notice of motion. Tina doesn't have anything like that for the start of the year. Nothing. Not a girl. Okay. Can I get somebody to get past this? Pardon me. Start a motion so we can go to in camera, please. Councilor Gardner, seconder. Councilor Wright, all in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll let Rhonda shut that thing off and then we'll go over some items. This conference will now be recorded. No, I didn't have anything else. Okay, there's nothing else to discuss, then I'll get someone to make a motion that we adjourn. Councillor Cowan, seconded by Councillor Penner. All in favor? Carried. Great. Thank you all very much. Have a great warm evening. Murray, will you wait for a sec? Yeah. Get ready if you need to stay in. Are you canceling the recording? Oh, oh. thank you.